Within this video, we're going to walk through bringing stuff in from Sketchfab here inside of Twinmotion. We're also going to be talking about some of the gotchas and little things you need to be worrying about. So check the description down below if you're running into a specific issue. Now, the very first thing you're actually going to want to do is actually make sure that you have an account and it's all set up. So I'm going to come up here into file and make sure that I am actually logged in. So file up here and then go ahead and choose your sign in down here. So if you're using a school account, you may need to use that, but you can, of course, always use your personal accounts as well. And once you have that all set up, you'll be able to use Sketchfab that has been integrated here into Twinmotion. Now let's go ahead and talk about bringing something in and talking about scale. So first thing I'm going to do is come over to the very top left. You notice there's a little tiny arrow. I'm going to just click on that. And I'm going to come down here where it actually says Sketchfab. Go ahead and click on this one. Now I have a whole bunch of options inside of here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this animals and pets. And quick thing that I want to point out, I'm going to pause the video as soon as it kind of comes up here, is that you'll notice that I've got two objects in here already. And that is preloaded because I've already got those on my account. So anything that you've got kind of already on your machine, they'll be right up there at the top. So it's really easy just to grab them. Um, after a moment, it will populate. So there you go. It'll go ahead and drop all those ones in there. So let's actually talk about scale. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this elf elephant animation idle. And I'm going to talk about the animation a little bit later. So if I click and drag this one in, because I've already got it downloaded, you'll notice that it's probably pretty huge. Well, how do I know that that's huge? If I go back to my library, come back down into my characters and drag in a character, you'll notice that, yeah, this thing is huge. So we really have no way of knowing how big these things are going to be as far as their size, because we don't know. We didn't actually make them, uh, but they're actually really easy to change their size. You actually come down here to the very bottom. You'll notice I've got a little toolbar that I can open and close. And if I use my scale tool right here, I'll go ahead and click on this and then go ahead and click on the actual object. I can hover over this little gizmo right in the dead center of it. And if I click and drag on it, I can actually change the size, which will make life a whole lot easier to see what's actually going on. So there it is. Now, the animation part, you will notice that this thing isn't actually animated, even though it does say animation idle on this one. So the animations in Sketchfab do not come across over into the twin motion environment as of right now. I'm hearing that there's something on the roadmap. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it'll be all updated. Next, I want to go ahead and talk about the actual size of the file. So when you're bringing these in, you may notice that right here is like, oh, well, this is only, you know, 3.6 megabytes. Like, that's cool. You don't have to worry about that much, right? But some of these other ones can be really, really huge. This one's like only 11. That's not too bad, right? But if you come down here further, you may end up with something that's like 142.5 megabytes, right? So this one's really, really big. So it will take a while to go ahead and download. So just be aware of that. So next, I actually want to talk about downloading onto your machine. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and just choose any of these randomly that aren't actually too big. Let's go ahead and choose this cat dispenser. So we'll go ahead and just click on this little tiny button right here, and that will actually download it onto my machine. Now, how long this is going to take will depend on two factors. One we've already talked about, which is how big the file is. And the other one is how fast your actual internet is. So I'll just go ahead and click on this. You'll get a little tiny indicator. That's a little thing that's going around. And as soon as it's actually finished, it will go ahead and allow us to drag this into our scene. So we'll give it just another moment. And then we can simply go ahead and just click and drag this in. And you'll notice I'll get a little circle with a plus on it. What that means is that it's going to go ahead and do some stuff in the background that we don't have to worry about. Go ahead and drop it in here. So we'll go ahead and just let go. And once it's done, we'll go ahead and just populate it. And there you go. Again, size issues. So something to be aware of. Uh, here's another little trick. We can go ahead and use our size gizmo. And if I hover over it and actually type in something like 0.1, it will allow me to go ahead and size it. So there it is. So that's good to go. When it comes to the actual look and feel of an object, you may or your students may want to actually manipulate that aspect of it, the textures and the materials. So if I go ahead and select the elephant, you'll notice that nothing happens. And we really want the information down here below to change so that we can manipulate its textures. So to do that, all we need to do is to click on our little pipette down here. So I'll click on that bad boy. Now I can go ahead and choose my elephant. So we'll click on the elephant. You'll notice that we get a bunch of information down here below. Now, if we want to go ahead and change the actual color of it, we do have that option right here. So we can just click on this. And now I can start to actually manipulate this and change the color of my elephant. So yeah, that's kind of fun. One, right? So we're going to say, okay. Now, the other thing we can do is actually change the textures. Now we do have an entire video on actually changing the material. So go ahead and check that one out in our playlist. Um, but real quickly, if you come down here to the more button, this is where you can actually access that information. There you go. Now let's look at this one right here, because this one's a little bit different than the elephant. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my pipette and click on that. And I'll click right here. And you notice that we get this. 
Now this is very interesting and you're like, what exactly is going on here? This is where we can actually look at the texture. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And you're like, hey, this is what that texture actually looks like. So when we're changing the color, let's go ahead and go back one here. I'll click on the little bright crumb up here. And if I change this, you notice that I'm really only changing one aspect of it. It's not really changing all the other parts. It's very kind of subtle too. So what I'm gonna do is cancel that. The thing that I wanna point out is that this object actually has, I'm gonna select it, press F, a couple of different materials that are on it. So to access those and to actually see those, what we need to do is actually click on this little button right down here, this little spot, click on that, and you'll notice that we have a couple of them inside of here. You notice that we've got one, two, three, four, five materials with check boxes on them. Those are the ones that are actually currently in the scene. The ones that do not have check boxes are not being used inside of our actual scene. Okay, so if I were to come in here and select this one and then come in here and change the color, we should see something actually change on here. You'll see that's actually the little sparkles. So there's that. And if I select this one and I go ahead and change it, let's see what this one's actually gonna be changing here. Ooh, it's subtle. I'm not actually seeing anything. So maybe it's not changing anything that we can see. It might be something on the inside. And then if we choose this one, we can actually manipulate this one as well, right? So some of these objects may be huge. Some of these objects may have multiple materials and the animations are not actually going to be coming across. So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and bring stuff in using the Sketchfab that is integrated into Twinmotion, how to actually change some of the materials. And if you want to dive even further, check out some of our videos and actually creating custom materials so that you can use them inside of Twinmotion. And of course, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, please just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you when I can.